Another day, another airport. Life and times, and please rewind. Mr. So, Mr. I'm so ahead of my time. AKA Monsieur Dumont, depending what continent we are on. Um, you see the hat, man, you know. Virtual heart, year of return. Please rewind, Ghana, we on the way. Uh, four hours left on my 20 hour layover. Um, decided not to leave the airport. The weather was a little muggy, rainy earlier, and it's a little better now. But hey, you know, I'm just so ready to get to Ghana. I didn't, I didn't even bother leaving. But anyway, that's another video. <laughs> um, something interesting happened uh, last night when I was on my flight to, um, when I was getting ready to board my flight to, uh, to come to Lisbon from Paris. And um, it, it, when I was, uh, so as I'm handing, you know, my, uh, my, boarding, my boarding pass and my passport, they're like, oh, okay, you, you, um, they, had, they had to issue me another boarding pass that included my flight from Paris to Lisbon, then Lisbon to Ghana as well on the same boarding pass. And so they're asking for my visa. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I have my visa on arrival approval letter from, from the year of return, you know, com uh, committee in Accra, Ghana. And so, you know, they're looking at it and they notice that there's like a little typo slash mistake. So they, you know, they get, you know, a little worried or whatever and they make a call. And so about five minutes goes by and, um, you know, they end up letting me, you know, being able to board the flight. They say, hey, just make sure you call, you know, just make sure you call or, you know, send an email, make sure you get that corrected and everything's all right for, you know, for your flight to Ghana. So they were more so not, you know, not wanting to let me on the flight, but just more concerned as, you know, is he going to be okay for the rest of his flights? So, you know, you know, more I understood. Um, I mean, as it went on, I understood more. But the interesting thing that happened was that afterwards, um, this lady came up to me as I'm, you know, still sitting on the, uh, like a little bit after the, the boarding desk, uh, you know, as you're walking through the tunnel and stuff. So she walks up to me and she's like, hey, is everything all right? I noticed that they pulled you over to the side and, and everything like that. And I'm like, oh yeah, everything's good. It was just a little, a little issue with my, um, with my uh, visa on arrival um, approval. It was like a, a number, you know, mis a number that was mistake, uh, mistaken on my uh, passport number. And so she's like, oh, okay. I, I deal with things like this all the, uh, these type of things all the time. Uh, I'm an immigration lawyer. So as soon as she said that, my mind started, st the wheel started turning in my head and the light bulb went off and everything. Um, and because uh, lately I've been studying this, um, the content on this channel called Nomad Capitalist, um, that's, you know, uh, uh, that's hosted by this guy named Andrew Henderson. And basically what he does is he helps people um, uh, with legal ways on lowering your taxes and um, you know and global citizenship and investing in international real estate and international business in general and um, and so and he, he talks about how you know a part of his team and the network that he, within the network that he works with are, are some of those people that he works with are immigration lawyers so you know he does like to do everything by the book and know all the rules and make sure that you know whoever his clients are he's giving them the proper information and so, um, so I, uh, so with the business that I want to develop is, you know, s s sort of, sort of on the same, uh, somewhere on the same path. You know, I really want to help people realize their full potential and, and, and what the world allows as far as, you know, two, three, four, five, six citizenships. You know, you can, um, you know, I don't think many people know that you're, that you're allowed to, uh, uh, you know, acquire that many, you know, outside of dual citizenships, you know, from people who might be, you know, first generation American, second generation American from, you know, parents from the Caribbean, Europe, or, you know, um, or, or, or any of the um, countries in Africa that offer dual citizenship as well. So, so yeah, you know, I, you know, I'm, I start asking questions. And I'm like, you know, curious as to, you know, how, when did she start learning French? And, uh, but, you know, come to find out that she actually was working with a, a lot of French um, immigrants and people that were moving and traveling throughout uh, Brazil. And so, um, and she, you know, the countries that she named were like Congo, um, Cameroon, Senegal, you know, uh, a few of the countries that she named. And, and so she had experience with that already. And then, and then uh, she got the opportunity to work in France, you know, and so she did. So she's been in France for, I think, you know, the past few years or so. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how long. But um, yeah, it was just interesting. So of course, you know, I wanted to exchange contact information, and um, uh, and you know, as I'm you know furthering developing my business going into the uh, going into 2020, um, I definitely want to you know uh, you know bring her on board, you know, with with what I'm working with and you know the goals that you know I have, 
and establishing this independent lo lo location, independent business, and you know, you know, international, you know, just global globalization, citizenship, business industry, you know, um, everything that really uh, Nomad Capitalist embodies. I I, I want to embody that, and um, it, it's been you know a huge, massive inspiration, like just on my whole model and just brand identity, you know, outside of the creative side, more on the travel and business side of things. Um, yeah, so, with, I mean, with that being said, uh, uh, yeah, we exchanged contact information um, and everything like that. But, yeah, I just wanted to say, like, you know, that wouldn't have happened if they would have skipped, if the boarding agent would have skipped over that mistake. I don't, you know, I highly doubt, you know, it would have just been, she probably just seen another guy just, you know, getting on the flight. She wouldn't have thought, you know, twice about it. So I'm really glad that that did happen. And I'm glad that she was concerned and, and everything like that. You know, maybe she didn't know where I was, maybe she thought I was from the Congo or Cameroon or something like that. You know what I mean? So she was just asking. And she's like, where are you from? Like, I'm, you know, told her I'm born in Texas, um, that kind of thing. And so, uh, yeah, um, it was interesting. So, um, yeah, like I said, uh, four hours left over. Uh, four hours left over on this layover. Man, that's time. Four hours left over on this layover. Yeah. Okay. Um, until until Ghana. Um, I touched down tonight at like eleven, maybe a little a little bit past midnight. Um, got my friend Hockey out there. He's gonna uh, he's gonna be uh, scooping me up from the airport. Gonna be showing me around. He said, "Yo, we're going out tonight." So I'm looking forward to tonight. I'm trying not to get too lit, but it's going to be my first night in Ghana, a crowd year of return. Please rewind Ghana. We here, man. It's your boy, Please Rewind. Monster Dumont, depending on what continent we on, a.k.a. Diodora the Explorer, a.k.a. I could go on, man. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep you up to date with my flight to Ghana and when I touch down and get my visa on arrival. You already know it. Ghana nightlife coming soon. Please get out of here.